Hello everyone, today I'll give you guys a quick lesson on the basics of an H-bridge. Um, so basically an H-bridge is a circuit that allows you to operate a DC motor through four modes of operation. Um, the first mode of operation you can use an H-bridge for is to run the motor in the forward direction and this can be accomplished by turning on this transistor and this transistor and leaving this transistor and this transistor off and this essentially lets power flow from your positive terminal through this transistor through the motor in this direction back through this transistor and then to ground um, intuitively another mode of operation would be to run the motor in reverse and this can be accomplished by turning on this transistor and this transistor while leaving this transistor and this transistor off and as you'll see when power flows from here through this transistor that the current will now flow through the motor in the opposite direction um, causing the motor to run in the reverse direction. So then the power eventually goes through this transistor and then back to ground completing the circuit. Um, the next mode of operation is a brake, or you can call it an electronic brake, which basically causes the motor to stop really quickly. Um, that can be accomplished by turning this transistor on and this transistor on, or it can be done by turning this transistor on and this transistor on. Uh, the last mode of operation is a free spinning mode and that is simply accomplished by just leaving all these transistors off. And that will basically allow your rotor to freely spin. Um, so the next part, or next thing I'll tell you about an H-bridge is that there's two kinds of ways, or two main ways you build H-bridges and that's either by using bipolar junction transistors or MOSFETs. Um, bipolar junction transistors are typically easier to build just because there's less circuitry uh, that you need to actually run them. Um, but they're only really good for low current operations, and that's especially prevalent if you want to use P-type type, uh, bipolar junction transistors, which simplify your circuit. And that's because P-type uh, or bipolar junction transistors are less efficient than N-type, so obviously you can't have as high of currents because you have uh, you'll you'll dis end up dissipating more heat, which usually you can't do without breaking them. Um, so MOSFET H-bridges are better for high currents uh, and they will be the focus of my video but you'll see that there's actually a little bit more uh, than meets the eye when you try to actually build one of these H-bridges with a MOSFET. Um, so for the purpose of this video let's go over the lingo I'll be using. Uh, number one will be the gate of the MOSFET, number two will be the drain, and number three will be the source and I'll use these to talk about voltages for example a gate source voltage which is the potential between the gate and the source is a quite a common voltage that you'll use to determine how much the transistor is on um, so a good way to think of a transistor is like a valve uh, a lot of people call you know MOSFETs and that sort of thing switches because typically they're operated in an on or off state much like a switch but it's important to remember that they operate more like a valve because if the transistor is not fully on it actually starts acting like a resistor in a way and that is ultimately determined like I said by your gate source voltage or pr at least primarily determined by that um, and typically to turn on a transistor or a MOSFET you need about 2 to 4 volts depending on the MOSFET to actually establish that electron channel through the metal oxide layer to effectively start conducting power. Um, however, to fully saturate a transistor, you usually need a little bit over around 10 or a little bit over uh, volts between the gate and the source, and that will pretty much cause it to reach its minimum uh, effective resistance. Um, however, with that being said, you gotta always be a little bit careful about the voltage you apply because a gate source voltage of more than 16 to 20 volts typically for most MOSFETs will cause them to actually burn up. Um, but this is where you're going to find now that we're going to run into a problem with the MOSFET or building a MOSFET 8 bridge and that is that for example say we have a 12 volt source that we want to apply to the gate uh, to turn on these FETs. So if you have a 12 volt source, 12 volts with respect to ground, um, you can see that if I attach the 12 volt source to this gate, we'll have 12 volts between here and here, which is perfect. That means this transistor is okay, it's going to conduct and be in saturation, as well as this transistor over here. But now when I apply 12 volts at the gate with respect to ground, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're actually going to get a gate source voltage of 12 volts, and actually quite probably uh, it won't be. Because for example, say this load has you know like a resistance of 2 ohms. 
obviously you're going to get some kind of voltage drop across the motor. So for example, say that it drops 7 volts. So if you have a 7 volt potential right here, and I apply 12 volts here, that really means I'm only giving a gate source voltage of 5 volts, which usually won't fully saturate this um, MOSFET, and thus it actually starts acting like a resistor. And when it starts acting like a resistor, that causes a whole bunch of problems, because for one, uh, you're not going to get very good power transfer to your load, and that can be seen quite easily, say, if this was a 2-ohm motor, and your MOSFET starts acting like a 5-ohm resistor, that means you're actually going to start baking off more of the power through this transistor than you're giving to the load. And also, uh, by, if you bake power off through the transistor, it's obviously going to heat up, which means you need to heat sink it very well, or the transistor is going to burn, because a lot of times uh, MOSFETs can't take a whole lot of power dissipation. Um, so basically, uh, you obviously want to find a way now to obviously increase this gate source voltage or find a different way to give you a proper gate source voltage so that your transistors will work properly. Um, so this can be done a few different ways. Uh, one of them is to add something called a charge pump uh, to this top, these top transistors or a voltage doubler if you're a little familiar with that term and um, essentially I, I'll talk, I talk about this in another video of mine um, but it will work in this application is actually quite a common way to go about this um, another way to do this is just attach um, a separate power supply that will give you the required gate uh, source voltage right off the bat but obviously this isn't quite as elegant and you end up sometimes needing multiple power supplies then to actually run your circuit um, the final way, which is quite a nifty way, is to use a special chip called an IR2110 um, and it basically takes care of all your voltages and uh, pretty much operates half of the H bridge in one go. Uh, I'll hopefully post a video about this at some point. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's definitely a nice way to build one of these and it simplifies your circuit a lot. Uh, a couple things though to watch out for when you do uh, build or design an H bridge is uh, this is more particular when you're controlling it after you build it uh, is to watch out and make sure that you never operate in a short circuit mode um, and that is basically if you have this transistor and this transistor on at the same time or this transistor and this transistor on at the same time intuitively power is literally just going to shoot straight through and go to ground meaning that you're going to have essentially a virtual short circuit caused by these both of these uh, MOSFETs being on at the same time and obviously that goes for the same over here so obviously with your controller, make sure that it's got some kind of failsafe that will never have these two transistors going at the same time because that almost instantly will burn them out. Um, the next thing uh, I suggest you do is attach these MOSFETs to a heat sink, but by doing so, you got to be a little bit careful because if you know or seen or worked with uh, MOSFETs in real life, you'll know that they look a lot like this. And in this case, for example, the drain is the middle leg here but also this back metal plate is also the drain so if you just directly attach this MOSFET to a metal heat sink like an aluminum heat sink uh, you're going to notice that all the drains are going to essentially be connected uh, to that heat sink which is not good because for example uh, this drain and this drain obviously are going to be at the same potential but they won't be at the same potential as this drain and this drain so you're going to cause short circuits and things are not going to work right um, and the last thing I suggest you do is add some kind of overload protection to your circuit. Um, and that is just because I've seen it and worked with a few MOSFETs that a lot of times when they break, uh, you can actually run into big issues because essentially all three of these terminals almost fuse themselves together and create a permanent, uh, permanent connection so it acts just like a straight wire. And obviously by having current just come pouring through there, through the gate or whatever, you usually will end up burning out a lot of stuff uh, outside of even just your FET, which is bad because I almost have to do sometimes a complete circuit rebuild in the event something does go wrong. So it's always a good idea if you can, try to put some kind of circuit protection in line so that uh, at least if your MOSFET does break, it's not going to take every other component attached to it with it. Um, that, that's pretty much all there is to the basics of an H-bridge. I mean, obviously this is a pretty brief overview of what they are, um, but they, as you can see, they're quite a powerful circuit, uh, and 
they're quite versatile in allowing you to actually give you quite a few ways to operate a motor, a simple DC motor. So if you guys have uh, any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below on the wall or send me a message. And thanks again for watching this video.